This is a video about some logic terms and concepts. So here is a number line on which I've marked 0 and 10. And we'll imagine statement A is that x is less than or equal to 0. So I'll draw that here in green. This is A. And then statement B is that x is less than or equal to 10. So I'll draw that here like this, B. So the first question we can ask is, does A imply B, which we can write with this notation A implies B. So in other words, if we know A is true, does that imply that B is also true? So here, if we know that X is less than or equal to 0, does that imply X is also less than or equal to 10? So clearly, the answer is yes in this case. We can see that visually too, anywhere, any point we pick within A, B is also true. So, all right, yes. So you could read this as A implies B. You could also say in this case, A is sufficient for B or a is a sufficient condition for B. We could also say A is stronger than B in the sense that A is more restrictive, right? It's a stronger, more restrictive assumption to assume that X is less than 0, then less than 10. Um, we could also say B is true if A is true or if A is true, then B is true. Lots of different ways of saying the same thing. Uh, and all of those sayings are true in this example. We can also think about the other uh, related logical relationships between A and B. So we could think about the uh, contrapositive which in this case, I'll write down that word, contrapositive. So contrapositive means uh, not B implies not A. So to look at this visually, we can write over here is where not B is true, or in other words, where B is false. And then over here is not A, or where A is false. So once you look at it like that, it helps visually. We can see if we pick any point where not B is true or where B is false, it will also satisfy not A. So we can see that here the contrapositive is true. And as it says in the book, this is true general in general. If A implies B, then not B implies not A. In terms of the example here, this means if X is greater than 10, that implies X is greater than zero. And once we put it that way, that, that makes sense. We can also look at the inverse, which, let me put a box around here. So the inverse in general, uh, I'm sorry, I should put a yes, the contrapositive is true. 
Uh, so in general, the inverse is not a implies not b. Now this sounds like maybe it should follow if a implies b, but we can find points where a is false, where b is true. So that gives us, for example, if x equals 5 is a counterexample, because there a is false, but b is still true. So that shows that the inverse does not hold, uh, meaning we can find a counterexample where a is false and yet b is true. Or in this particular example, we can find a counterexample where uh, x is greater than 0, but less than 10. Finally, we can look at the converse, which is b implies a. So in this example, that would say uh, if we know that x is less than or equal to 10, does that imply that x is less than or equal to 0? And again, that is clearly false in this case because there are points like x equals 5 where b is true, x is less than 10, but a is not true because x is not less than 0. So the converse is not a valid statement. So those are just some terms and concepts that hopefully will be helpful in the rest of the book.